Maca's Guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maca here. Welcome to my collectibles guide for A Plague Tale Innocence. In this video, I'll be showing you all 50 of the collectibles, including the 26 curiosities, the 11 gifts, and the 13 flowers. On screen, you'll see all the information you need, including the chapter we're currently in, the name and number of the collectible, as well as an ongoing counter through the game. I will also have a separate video showing some of the missable achievements you can go for or trophies. Now, things should also save immediately after picking them up, feel free to either do these on your first playthrough or mop them up on your second. Now the first collectible was found before entering the house. We'll reach a small little town with a horse stable on the right hand side. We climbed up a ladder and found our first gift. Once we make it into the house, you can take a right hand turn, follow the rooms, go up a ladder and find your first curiosity, which is spices. This game is incredibly linear, generally speaking. It's actually a fantastic game. I'd highly recommend you enjoy it. Uh, but in terms of like its linearity, it's pretty linear. You'll do the exact same thing as everyone else. So there's not a lot of light. There's no map or anything you need to really worry about getting lost. Just follow along with the video and you'll see the same stuff I see guaranteed. Now go back to the beginning of the house and then instead of going to the right, you can go up to the left, talk to the maid and she'll give you a tablecloth on your bed, which will be your second curiosity. Police math that mother made for me when I was a little girl. Then we're going to move on to chapter two. And for chapter two, near the beginning, you're going to go forward and enter this small little tent village. It's like a little market. And instead of going past all of this towards the gate, which is the main path, make sure you take a small detour to the right. You'll find a dock sitting over the water. You'll find gift number two. This one is called Amulets and Talismans. A little bit later on in chapter two, You'll reach a section where all the doors are closed and no one wants to talk to you. And this is technically a split path. You can go left or right. I'm going to go right as it's closer, but it loops around and it's quite a small loop. So don't worry if you went left, you'll see a statue and you kind of loop back around. Um, but if you take the right hand side path, you'll cross over this small little arc bridge. And then you'll see a small little um, alleyway to the right hand side where we can go through that. Follow along the right hand side wall into the curiosity of soap. We'll eventually end up inside of the house of an old lady. She'll ask us to go upstairs and change if we so desire. So that's what we're going to do. But before uh, interacting with the clothes dresser, make sure you grab the collectible, which is in the back left corner sitting on the table. Incense. It smells like home. Mother used to use it. We then start off chapter number three. Near the very beginning of the chapter, you should be able to walk forward and to the end of the room and to the right, where you'll notice a small little altar set up. And here you can pick up a rosary. You might need to interact with Hugo for him to let you walk to this area uh, first. You'll then come down some stairs, go through an arch door. You'll notice a large statue in front of you. At this point, Hugo should start talking about flowers. There are 13 flowers in the game and uh, typically picked up by Hugo. Uh, so we'll walk forward into this uh, kind of open courtyard area. You'll walk pretty slow as you're having a conversation. But once Hugo kind of rejoins you, he should run up to the flower. And once he does that, you can go and join him in a conversation. Whenever you do pick up a flower, he will put it in your hair for you. And you'll get the notification kind of on the left of the screen that you have these. And uh, the first one here is for carnations. And it's pretty too. Oh, all right. Now we can go. Thank you, Hugo. You're welcome. We'll then continue on in chapter three a little bit further on. You'll use your sling to knock down some fire pits from the ceiling in order to make progress. I'm not going to show you too much, too many of the solutions for the puzzles, but this one is kind of necessary as it does uh, involve something. But you'll end up in this room. You can't progress forward. There's a ladder on your left. You'll run to the little balcony. Use your sling to fire down another fire pit, which will now let you cross. As we're crossing, there is a small little jump up we can mantle on on the right hand side. So allow the fire pit to swing in order to uh, make the shadows move so that the rats don't get you. And on your way there, make sure you jump over mantle to the right instead of going completely forward. There's a small little side room here. You can pick up some resources for crafting as well as curiosity number five, brew. No, 
Sweet smoke. We'll then reach a point in chapter three a little bit further where we got separated from Hugo. You'll notice that I've lit all of these fire pits. I can take my stick and kind of make my way to where he was and he'll come down his ladder and join me and we can proceed through the level. However, for curiosity number six, the Crusader Tabard, what we want to do is actually climb back up the ladder that he came down. There's really not much up there other than this collectible. So you'll go up the ladder and it should basically be directly in front of you right against the wall um, in a small box on the ground. We can then start off with chapter 4, right at the very beginning of the chapter. Just run forward and take a right-hand turn through the broken fence. You'll see a small break in the bushes where we can kind of run through and just keep running in that general direction. As you near the water, you'll notice a small uh, kind of pit uh, of like a, uh, the, 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 the stump of a tree. And uh, near that stump, you can find the vessel. We then move forward and Hugo tries to play hide and go seek in what I believe is a vineyard. Uh, instead of going to find him, turn to the right hand side and follow along the first row. At the end, you'll find a boat and this person should have gift number four, the diary of an alchemist. We will then eventually reach a town and we are looking for someone in this town and there's a back door we can go through to meet them. But before we do that, we want to basically just run uh, to the complete opposite end of where we kind of entered this area from. You'll just notice a tree as well as a chicken coop. We'll run past that. Hugo might want to interact with them on your first time through the area. But around back, you'll notice a tree with a flower. Pick it up. This is flower number two. Some of the flowers also have some pretty lengthy little cutscenes that go along with them. So make sure you stick around until it finishes. Perhaps she would be less lonely with us. Yes. It's not good to be alone. <laughs> All right, let's go. Eventually, you'll end up inside of a house and you'll hear a voice of the person you are looking for. They should be in the door right in front of you at the top of the stairs. You can get this collectible either before or after the cutscene where you meet them. If you want to grab it before, just head up the stairs. Instead of taking that door directly in front of you, go to the other door on the kind of other side of this small area and you can find it. Or if after the cutscene, it's the same door in the same place, you'll just spawn in a different direction. Then we can go straight to chapter number five. You will reach an area where you cross kind of under the large bridge. And this one is very far away from the main path. Instead of crossing under that bridge, you're going to take a left-hand turn. You'll notice like a small little creek uh, or a waterfall. And you'll turn left and basically just hug the right-hand side wall as you run deeper and deeper into the forest. Eventually, there will be a small clearing and you can find flower number three. This one is called Gladiolus. Oh. They're so pretty. What are they again? Gladiolus. Ah, yes, of course. Don't you like them? That's not a good sign. Hugo, they're flowers. Mm hmm. Later on in the level, you'll reach this part where there's this huge structure in front of you. You'll use your sling to open it up. There'll be an enemy inside. You'll take them out. You'll then be able to light this uh, pushing cart on fire. And you'll be able to basically, from where it spawns, bring it kind of up the hill and towards the enemy. As the enemy spots you, you'll probably want to get off and take them out with uh, a sling using your rock. And then you can push it forward. And basically, right where he was standing... There's a small chest, and inside of this chest, you can find curiosity number nine, which is a sickle. Not too long after that, you will reach a part with two bodies. Use your sling to take them down, and this will allow you to proceed through this area. I think you can also use one of your like spells instead, but we're going to do that. And then basically just hug the left hand side wall. You'll notice a small little dead end path where you can pick up curiosity number 10. You'll then eventually reach a puzzle where you use a kind of catapult to get across to an area. 
you'll bring Hugo with you and you'll send him through the hole uh, in order to grab you a fire stick. This is a mandatory puzzle you'll need to do in order to make progress. But what you do with the stick once you get it, there's actually a second option and you can take it to get a collectible. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wave to your buddy to uh, launch the catapult back to bring you back over. And then instead of going through the gate right next to the catapult, we actually want to make our way kind of back towards where we came from, but up the hill and to the left. So light your fire stick and head in that direction. And once you reach that, once you reach there, you'll see a fire pit. Make sure you light the fire pit uh, on or the rats will get you. And next to this fire pit, you can find the ballastella. And then you'll be able to backtrack to the catapult and then go in the actual direction of the rest of the mission. Lucas, is this of any use to us? It's a tool for... We then reach chapter number six. This chapter has a little bit of stealth. You'll reach this mandatory section where you have to uh, view something on the left of the screen in order for one of your buddies to take out this guard directly in front of us. As that happens, two guards will also kind of uh, come right across the screen. And then we're going to be sneaking through some tents. These tents do have glass bottles in them, so make sure you don't knock them over as you might get spotted like I do on screen. But if you do walk forward past these bottles, instead of turning right at the end, you want to turn left. And this will kind of feed you back into the main area. And then there's a small little table in front of you. Here you can pick up gift number six, Knuckle Bones. Jack. A little bit later on in chapter six, you'll reach a red and white tent where you will sneak through and come outside. You're actually supposed to go left, but for this collectible, we want to stick down and to the right. And then there's this small little workshop area, and you can find curiosity number 11, the pound sterling in here. Of coins. Aren't you going to take them? English currency. You will then reach a point of the chapter where you get reunited with Hugo. You, there's a ton of enemies here, which I've kind of taken out already. You'll notice like a four kind of outpost set up in the distance by a gate. If you run forward to the middle of the area and a little bit to the left, you'll notice this white tent. Uh, it's quite a big tent, and inside, in kind of the middle of it, you can find curiosity number 12, the declaration of war. We then move on to the next chapter. This is chapter number 7. We are right near the beginning of the chapter and just solved the little uh, water mill puzzle. And once we do, we can go over to the tool bench, use our sling, to open a kind of small little window hatch and then we can run around to the front of it in order to climb inside. There'll be a short little kind of animation where you, you know, you meet up with Hugo and whatnot. But once you get up and in, just head to the kind of opposite side of where we entered to find a horseshoe hanging on the wall. Hmm. Not much here. Hey, what is it? A horseshoe. Wow. We will then continue on through the level and reach this small town with a very noticeable well near the middle. Take a right hand turn here and enter the far house that's broken down. Inside here we can find flower number four. This one is called Hawthorne. You know what that is? Hawthorne, I think. Nobody likes it because of the thorns, but it's good for the heart. Well, aren't you a fount of knowledge? Mommy taught me. You can teach me then. And will you teach me how to use this thing? It's a deal. Now we're still in chapter 7, but you may notice that it is now nighttime, and that is just part of the progression of the story. You'll notice that we're kind of sneaking through the woods, and off in the distance there is a castle with a large gate that's kind of lit up. A ton of enemies as well. We'll be ignoring the ones we don't really care about. But as we approach this gate, Take a look to your right hand side. You'll notice a small little outpost of sorts. There should be two enemies here. You'll probably want to take care of them. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to make sure to basically uh, stealth one guy and then we'll grab the other guy with our sling. And right where that second guy is standing that we're about to grab right now is where we can find curiosity number 14. This one is a map. He does have a helmet, however. So I'd recommend you use your sling instead of uh, the sleeping potion. The sleeping potion is really intensive on crafting materials that you could probably use for upgrades instead. So I want to recommend using the sleeping potion if you don't need it. Still in chapter 7, gift number 7 is vinegar. 
You'll reach a point where you are standing on basically the edge of a cliff in a thunderstorm. You'll run up this huge kind of epic staircase and then take a left-hand turn once you reach the top. There is a special door here that you can get Melly to lockpick. Once you lockpick it, just walk inside. You should notice the gift pretty much right in front of you. Is that supposed to be the miracle remedy they talk about? Chapter number eight. At the very beginning, basically, you'll walk forward, notice Hugo runs down the stairs. Before you follow him, just take a little tiny detour to the right here and get curiosity number 15, iconography. And then what you want to do is go downstairs, interact with like the story elements, and then follow Hugo back upstairs. This is basically where we started the mission. And instead of going through the door we went through at the beginning, go like across the room. Just keep following him. You can't really miss this one. And he'll go down the stairs again. This time the stairs are to the right. And you want to look to the left. And there you will find the alchemical crucible. Lucas will be happy. Still in chapter 8, once you reach the top of those stairs, you'll have a couple of conversations with a few people. Uh, you'll notice that there's like a big kind of uh, circular structure in the middle. And uh, behind this barrel, you can pick up the bird language manual. You will have to have some conversations with people before you can pick it up, so don't worry about that. And then a little bit later on in Chapter 8, you'll have a very long conversation in a cutscene. And after it, you'll get a new objective, and you'll also hang up your necklaces on the tree trunk. If you turn around from right where you spawn, you'll notice Hugo is picking up some flowers. You'll want to interact with him. He'll put it in your hair. And you'll get flower number five, the St. John's Wart. Must be powerful stuff. Yes, it's a very good flower. It looks good on you. Thank you. We then move on to the very beginning of chapter nine. As soon as you spawn, walk forward. Basically, the second tree on your left at the very bottom of it, there should be flower number six, lavender. You should get an achievement or trophy as well at this point for having uh, six out of the 13 flowers. She likes putting them in my hair, aristocrats. A decent chunk of time later on in the chapter, you'll be sneaking about, you'll notice a couple of people kind of arguing uh, through a fence in front of you, and you'll take this mandatory door into this side room. You can then use your sling to bring down the body in order to figure out the rat situation. But as you do that, an enemy will run into the room. You can just take out this enemy right away, uh, or you can try to figure out a different solution. So what I did was I just took out his lantern, and the rats went to go grab him. Then I switched to the little like firecracker thing. Uh, we're gonna see right here, it's called the Luminosa. You might have to craft one if you don't have one. And I'm gonna throw it at where that enemy was in order to clear the rats. Behind that is a chest where you can pick up the sheepskin. Now, if you do this a little bit differently, you can save the resources on the crafting if you'd rather kind of wait it out. Then later on in chapter nine, you'll come up a hill You'll use your lantern to get all of the rats kind of stuck in a corner near a graveyard. And at that point, you'll finally be able to access the graveyard where there is a pushable uh, like cube of wood, which we'll need to solve the next puzzle. Before you do that, just hop over the fence right behind it, jump down the ledge, turn to the left, find curiosity number 18, piece of transis. As if this place wasn't sinister enough. You'll then sneak through a whole bunch of more sections. You'll come to this part where there is a very large carriage directly in front of you and some enemies will kind of walk around the area. If you turn to the right hand side here, you should notice these two enemies standing about. It does take them a while to get here, so if you're really quick, they might not be here yet. Then you're going to want to take both of them out. One of them does have a helmet, so you might want to keep that in mind. But once they're both taken care of, you can find gift number nine, the chessboard on the table, right where they was, right where they were standing. A chessboard. Lucas might like it. Flower number seven can be found in chapter ten, near-ish the beginning. You'll take out uh, two enemies here, and instead of crossing across the room, work work your way to the left, sticking to the wall. You'll want to use a luminosa here to get rid of the rats in this side room. And inside of this room, a very mysterious daisy is blossoming, so make sure you pick it up. Uh, Hugo is not with you, so you'll put this one in your own hair this time around. There will then be this kind of long hall with all of these lit lanterns on the sides. A bunch of enemies will walk away, and after they're done, you can go up forward to the right and find the study of a person, skin person, uh, curiosity number 19. 
And then a little bit later on in chapter 10, we've now met up with a new friend. There is a puzzle here with a bunch of gears. What we want to do before doing that puzzle is just run across the room to the left of where we entered. There's a small little side secret room here. You can find curiosity number 20. Then a little bit later on in the chapter, you'll be escaping. You'll learn that your friend can kind of stealth take out armored enemies, which is what happened to this guy right here. But before progressing on, what I'm going to do is follow to the end of the room. There will be a chest as well as a table with gift number 10. Chapter number 11 is very much a kind of storytelling mission. So near the very beginning, when you have to reach the bottom of the pit to rejoin your friend, uh, before doing that, just come down the ladder and then stick to the right-hand side wall, and you should find flower number eight, and then we can move on. I didn't see you there. It must have been hiding under the weeds. It would make Hugo smile, perhaps. Hey, don't worry. He's a resourceful kid. I know, but... Chapter number 12, gift number 11, the final gift. You will reach the top of a hill after shooting down a cart. And instead of going left, go to the right and you'll notice this small little hut. Use the Ignifier on the small little fire pit and then use the Luminosa on the inside of this house. This will clear all of the rats inside, but be rather quick as they do respawn. On the table directly in front of you, find gift number 11, the Calamus, the final gift of the game, unlocking your achievement or trophy for finding all 11. I can't... Then, as a part of the progress of the mission, we will get a uh, large torch that we carry through this hole in the wall. There's going to be a bunch of swirling rats that aren't eating the people for some reason. And you'll figure that out as part of the story. Uh, go past the table to the left. Stick to the left. You'll notice that the path continues here. This is the actual uh, direction of the mission. As you enter this room, go to the far back right-hand corner. You'll see a small little chest. Inside of that, curiosity number 21 is a helmet. Was it your father's? Yes. From his days... You'll then reach this section. There's a door in front of us. We'll go through. You'll notice a light source off in the distance, as well as a giant rat's nest kind of down in, uh, in the middle there. Uh, continue on the path to the left, and right near the end of the path, near a tree, you should be able to find flower number nine, the sink foil. Intact. A sink foil. Hugo wouldn't have wanted us to leave it here. Much later on in chapter number 12, near the very end of the mission, you'll reach this room. I've went ahead and ignited all of the embers in order to light the room fully. But from where you entered, if you go to the right-hand side, there are some kind of uh, metal bulbs for practicing alchemy. And there you can find the family tree collectible. Then chapter number 13, which is very much a storytelling chapter, you will walk forward through this very linear path and this woman will open the door for you, but instead we're going to crouch and go to the right. There is a little hidden nook, and in here we can find the rag doll. He's rag doll. He never would have left it behind like this. Just a few moments later, we'll reach the inside of the house. The door will be blocked, but then uh, the person will move out of the way and let us through. I'm trying not to spoil anything for you guys to the best of my ability. As you walk into the room, don't talk to Hugo yet. Instead, Follow to the second back room. Inside, you can find the knight figurine. One of his toys. You will then reunite with Hugo outside, and there's this large chariot where you'll spawn by, and run forward down the path, but also make sure you take a small little detour to the right here, and you'll notice that there is flower number 10, the daffodil. A flower? It's a daffodil. Do you want it? Of course. You're not... Too cross, are you? I was scared, Hugo. Me too. Well, it's over now. Lady Daffodil will watch over us. Yes. Chapter number 14 is a very long chapter. You play as Hugo throughout the entire thing, and there's only one collectible about midway through. It's flower number 11, the Black Nightshade. You're following around a guy who's going to bring you to a location that you need to get to. And you'll reach this large outdoor co courtyard with a bunch of snow. Instead of sticking behind him, go to the left and then you'll be able to kind of cut across. Now at this point, you can run across the path kind of directly in front of me. But I'm going to wait because he does spot you and it can get a little bit tricky. 
in this section you will instantly fail should you be spotted you don't actually get a chance to fight back or anything so this is our kind of key character we're following here i'm going to let him cross in front of me and follow him kind of in the general direction of how we exit this area but instead of turning left at this section we're going to follow this same path and basically hug the bushes to our right we'll notice that there's a small little opening in these bushes where we can find flower number 11 the black nightshade again this section is insta fail so keep that in mind and if you take any other route to this section you'll probably get spotted also you probably want to keep that in mind Chapter number 15 is very much another storytelling mission from the very beginning from where we spawn We'll have a very short conversation and then we'll be able to go into this room directly in front of us off To the middle here. You can find flower number 12 the rock foils Now the game has 17 chapters, but chapter 16 is the last one with collectibles You'll reach a section where you'll notice the cathedral in front of you off far in the distance and we can take a quick right hand turn as we're walking towards it notice these two guards talking we will have to get by them as part of the story but before we do that there is a small little alley to the right of them and if we enter this we can find a downed inquisitor and here you will have discipline to pick up now eventually you'll reach this large courtyard with the house off in the distance You'll have one battle here, and then you'll try to open the door and have a second battle that concludes with you taking out a large knight. And then this door should now be open to the left if from where we entered. If we follow along through that door that had just opened as part of a small little cutscene, we can find our final flower, flower number 13, the Christmas Rose. So again, in this section, you will have two fights, and the door will only open after the second fight before trying to go inside of the house let's go last but not least our final collectible very close to the cathedral you'll walk forward and look to the right hand side instead of going up the stairs to find curiosity number 26 thank you guys so much for watching the video if it was helpful please drop a like it really does help out the channel Consider sharing the video with a friend, that also really helps out the channel. If you really want to support the channel, you can also check out my Patreon page, like many fine people did on screen. Shout out to them and double O. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully I see you in one of my future videos. Peace!